How's it going, guys? This is DSP News. And uh, today, we're going to be bringing you from uh, MDP, DSP's thoughts, on, DSP's thoughts on the full story regarding John Rambo. I'll leave the link of that in the description. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's just go ahead and let's just go ahead and hear it out and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'll stop as I need to. All right. And uh, yeah. First question from Eric. He says, uh, Phil, I admire your honesty and hope you can answer my question since you're quite open about this. I know you'll probably get this a lot, but what's up with you and John Rambo? Did you have a falling out? Uh, is it because you two are far away? I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Thank you. The bottom line is this. I will be completely 100% honest with you. And, uh, you know, people will probably try to make shit up or say they don't believe me because they want to believe drama queen shit. Um, the bottom line is this. When I lived in Connecticut for years, John and I did co-op commentary, co-op gameplay. We did the show Smart Guys. We traveled together. We did Street Fighter gameplay together. We did a lot of stuff, projects and everything together. <laughs> In all of that time, all right, in all of the time that we did that stuff together, I could think of maybe one to two times ever that we ever had a disagreement on something. And even then, it was something that was minor and that was handled quickly. And it wasn't that we ever let it got to the, get to the point where business would hinder friendship. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of the big risk that you take when you go into business with someone that it might negatively affect <clears throat> the relationship that you have the person outside of the business. And even though we treated the whole YouTube thing that we did together as like just a casual silly thing, there was money involved and there were other factors involved. The bottom line is never in that entire period of time before I moved out of Connecticut did I ever get any, you know, ever have any ill will or feelings toward John. Never did he have any real major ill will or feelings towards me that I knew of. He never said anything about money. You know, he got paid for everything that he was involved in. He never said anything about money or anything like that. And we had great agreements that were going on. And when we left it, when I left Connecticut, where we left it at, was that I was going to move here. It was going to take me a couple months to get set up everything with work or whatever. But I was going to contact him uh, in early, uh, early fall, <clears throat> let him know when I was fully up and running again. And then I wanted to continue to do stuff, whether it was smart guys via Skype and uh, gameplay, you know, cooperatively over the Internet. And obviously, John didn't have a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. And we were going to try to coordinate it and figure out what could he or couldn't he do for gameplay. Would we do stuff last gen? Would there be other stuff? We were going to figure it all out. OK, uh, and that's where we left it. Now, John Caney helped me pack all the stuff up. When I was leaving in June of last year, he came and helped pack up and helped me move out of my place in Connecticut. OK. And we stayed in contact. I talked to him via text a lot. We were talking about different things going on with the move. I talked to him about <coughs> TV shows and stuff going on. I was asking him about what was going on with Schnauz Man, a whole punch, and we stayed in contact regarding that. And the way we left it was that later in the year, once he was done with Schnauz Man, a whole punch, we were going to talk again about the possibility of, of, of coming back together and doing, uh, you know, uh, content over the internet again. And then in late 2014, finally we had a conversation. He says, hey, listen. I'm going to make this abundantly clear, you know, so there's no misconceptions. At this point, I'm kind of burnt out on the whole YouTube thing. I really don't even want to put a lot of effort into my stuff. I, I, I put all this effort into Schnoz Man a Hole Punch, and that's really where I put all, exerted all of my effort, and that's what I focused on, and that's really all I really care about at this point. I mean, it was cool if we did all the YouTube stuff previously, but I don't really care to be, you know, involved with anything from your YouTube channels at this point, and if that changes, I'll let you know. Okay, fine. I won't even, you know, great. I won't even bring it up if you don't, right? There's no reason for us to really bring it up or anything any further. And now I remember as last... All right, let me cut in real fast. So, <clears throat> a couple of things up to this point. So, the whole time that um, him and John pretty much knew each other, they didn't have any real uh, problems except for one or two situations. Um, and he said that they were resolved quickly. Fair enough. <coughs> All friends have uh, little disagreements, but, you know, you guys don't let that break a friendship up, depending on how drastic it is. As it pertains to the risk of, um, as, uh, as it pertains to the risk of going into business, it's not just with your friends, it's with anybody. You're taking a bit of a risk. Anything that involves time or money is a bit of a risk, because both of them are in pretty short supply, 
and you can't really gain your time back, but you can you can certainly gain a lot of money depending on what you're doing. Now, how transparent was Phil with John is the real question that I've been saying for a very long time, and uh, as well as some of you who have said in some of my other uh, videos. Now, did he have to disclose to John his, you know, his, what is it? They get paid every two months. So what he was making every two months, you know, over and over again? No. <coughs> but, excuse me, if they did agree to, hey, you're going to come in on these uh, on this playthrough with me with a certain game, you, I mean, how do you divide that up? Because especially if you think about Phil back in those days and the amount of content that he had, how do you divide that up? You know, what you and John made compared to the other, oh, I don't know, 60 or 70 videos you put out that week. You know what I'm saying? How do you pair all that up? Especially when it's going on to this, onto the same channel that's being flooded and whatnot in overabundance of material. How do you divide all that money up? So, and John, I would think, is a really smart guy. So John would be like, I would assume John would have asked to be, at first, he probably didn't ask to get cut in on anything, really. But as the series probably grew in popularity and given the amount of time it took John to go to and forth, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, Phil's spot, from his condo, um, you know, as John has said in his own words, between time off from work, if he took time off, he's, the, the guy's got to eat, wear and tear on the car, it's like, what, a three-hour round trip? I'm sure Doom in the comment section will... Uh, will uh, coordinate if I'm right on some of these points or whatnot. These are things that really, that strenuous just on his end. What does Phil have to do? All he has to do is sit on his ass and wait for John to get there. He can do a DSP tries it while John's on the way there. And then they, they record a bunch of stuff and Phil throws it up on the internet and he makes his money. So in truth, John was the one who made a lot of the sacrifices. What did Phil really have to do? He just sat there and recorded it and he put it up on the internet. But back to my original point, as it pertains to money, there's always going to be some type of risk. But that's where, especially if you're friends or business partners, it works the same way, really. You're transparent with each other. You keep everything on the up and up, and you keep that understanding between each other, and a friendship can make it, a friendship can go past money. You know what I mean? If you keep everything on the up and up, and if you guys stay honest with each other. <coughs> Excuse me. Does John come across as somebody who would ask for more than his fair share? I want you, uh, you know, honestly, does, if any of you have seen a video with John Rambo in it or anything before this initial breakup, no pun intended, did, did John ever come across to you as someone who would want more than what he felt that he was deserved? And think about it. I would assume at least early on, he took a whole lot of L's before he saw any paydays. So th that's just the, kind of the angle I'm coming from with that. So it's, it's. Yet again, being very dishonest of him to say that he's paid John for every little thing. I know John got the majority of his money in the end. But in the beginning, when Phil was kind of starting up and they were doing these projects together, I would assume that, you know, John was doing a lot of that free. Not just John, but Howard and OJ also. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got this cold. Um, as it pertains to the situation when he moved. Okay, let's talk about when Phil moved and... How, okay, I'm going to need a couple months to get myself myself together and get the house organized and get my setup together, and then we can start up again. What was John supposed to do? Sit there and wait on you? I mean, let's be honest. And that's obviously not what John did, because why would John do that? You know, if John had, I think what John did was he made time for you, as most friends, as a lot of friends will do. But, you know, he's not going to wait forever, and he's certainly not going to wait more than, a, he's not going to wait a week for you. You know, it just doesn't work that way. He has his own life, too. He has his own bills. He has his own obligations. You know what those are, Phil. You beg about... You talk about that every day. As it pertains to you moving, of course John was going to help you move, or he was going to help you pack. He's your friend. That's one of the... You know, if you want to know if your friends are dependable, not if you are if you have good friends or whatnot, but if you want to know if, if your friends are dependable, see if, they, see if they're the ones who come around to help you pack and actually help you move. That's a, that's a great way of measuring if you have dependable friends. So why, why would you be surprised that John would show up for that? So there you go on that one. <clears throat> he sounds like what I've been basically blabbering on about in many of my videos where everybody around him is merely a tool or an instrument for him. And they have to be there at his beck and call. 
And if not, they're useless to him. And I think with John, I think with John, he he's <coughs> he's known him a long time. So obviously he was always expecting him to be there because I would assume John had always been there, at least as much as he could have. And when he didn't, he got bitter. But let's let uh, Phil keep talking about it in his own words. Oh, one more thing. When uh, Phil finally did get his shit together and he's like, hey, man, you know, you want to comment on this and that? And John was like, hey, I'm burnt out. Well, I don't know what John's situation was, but I do know he was certainly working. He's like an independent contractor. So he was probably spending more time getting this real money instead of worrying about this YouTube money. It's something he, like, uh, Snodge Man and Hole Punch was something he did on the side. It was something he was passionate about because John's art is... He's an artist, but this isn't his life. This you, you, Phil, chose to make this your life. You chose that. Don't worry. I mean, let's be honest. You didn't, you know, YouTube didn't choose you. You chose YouTube. <coughs> For John, he's like everybody else, and he went out there and he did what he had to do. And when you were ready to get yourself together, and I would assume when views were dropping on some of your material, well, here, I'll go and get John because everybody loves John. Because if you go back and look at the comment section of some of those videos... Hey, when are you and John going to do this? When are you and John going to do that? Because John's a pretty funny person. Super entertaining, too. You know what I mean? So, he's definitely funny. I, I think he's hilarious. Um, so, there you go. So, when... I think what happened was when the business, in quotes, was uh, slipping for Phil, he ran back to John to try to get back in the sequence, and John had moved on with his life, to a degree. Doesn't mean you guys weren't friends, but he moved on. And then that's when the whole fuckery started. But let's keep going year progressed even further i would text him and every once in a while he would text me back it was like we were almost losing touch we didn't have as much contact now if you remember traditionally i would be on john's a podcast for the black friday episode every year he would have like a special black friday episode where they go through ads and stuff about black friday and last year in particular i hadn't heard from him so i'd actually text him and said fyi john i'll be available if you want me to be on but i haven't heard from you yet so i'm assuming maybe you don't want me to be on or whatever that's fine and he never what made you come to that assumption what if he just chose not to do it that year? Yeah, he's done it every year previously, but maybe that year he just decided to skip it. And to be honest with you, Black Friday, uh, Black Friday specials have kind of dwindled a little bit as in how good they were compared to previous years. There may have just not been anything interesting. His time may have been just occupied. Why is it always going to be about, oh, well, if you don't want me on there, John, I won't be there. What makes you, what makes you believe that? What even gave you that inkling? I mean, what, because he's not calling you every day, all of a sudden there's a problem? That's funny. That sounds very interesting to something that happened recently. Hint, hint, wink, wink, for all of you guys who are paying attention. So, come on, Phil. Like I said, the guy has his own life. Um, I don't know what you're expecting. I really don't. He, he, may have just not, he may have just decided not to do it that year. Just because you're used to the same mundane existence year after year after year it doesn't mean everybody else does some people change up some people try to improve some but here at dsp news as long as you keep doing things your way we'll keep doing things our way yeah let's keep going really responded i didn't really hear from him much i wished him a merry christmas later that year he did respond to that and then less and less i heard from him it wasn't like there was any argument, there was a falling out or anything. None of that happened. So Not that we would expect you to be honest about that, to be honest with you. Ah, that's funny. But uh, not that you would be transparent about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Not at all. Not at all. And whatnot. It's 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 you've been you've been pretty quiet about that until they made the response video. And then as um, Doom had pointed out to me recently, shouts out to Doom by the way. Uh, shout out to everybody, actually, really. Whether you like the channel or you hate the channel. I, I, I appreciate you guys showing up. It means a lot. GTG. Done a lot of ones. When, um... You wouldn't have been transparent about that anyway, up until, you know, you made that video about John and Howard and everybody, and then they made the response video. And then, as Doom had pointed out, you flagged that. And that's why they had to put it on a share network and, uh... Or on a file share website, and then that's why there's multiple pe uh, multiple channels that have it their actual response. I'm actually considering on downloading and putting up on the channel too, just so it's somewhere else. Just so maybe more people have it. Not that I'm trying to dredge anything up. It's just to preserve what what is the truth, I think, in a lot of ways. You know, what you try to suppress. Like 
your comment section. Just saying. DSP News. Anything actually happened behind the scenes with John or Howard or whatever happened with the people back in Connecticut, right, who I used to do stuff with all the time, it's 100% on their end, and it was never actually brought to my attention at all. Now, here's another thing, and we harp on this a lot here at uh, DSP News. How do you get this far in life and nothing is your fault? That you're just, you're infallible and you just, nothing can touch you. Nothing can stick to you. How did you get this far in life like that? Like, how did your parents, and I don't even want to bring your parents up in this, but like, this has to be something that either was instilled into you or you yourself developed this. Which means you would be, and not to say that you're mentally ill, but there's something very wrong with this frame of thought. And yet you consistently, you have consistently stayed on this path and you've never wavered from it. It's, it's, it's not even admirable. It's just, it's, it's the type of stupidity that everybody usually wakes up out of. But you don't. And I'm, I'm just... And see, that's the reason why no one can get you into an interview. That's why no one can get you on a show to talk to you. Because, oh my gosh, I'd love to get you on. If I considered even starting a talk show, which someone had mentioned, I would love to get you on there as my very first guest. All I want is an hour to just kind of, to kind of just, um, and hit you with some hard-ass questions and just to see how you respond. But you won't do it. You won't do it because behind your own camera, you know, behind your own microphone, on your own shitty couch, in that house where there's nobody there now. There's what, you know, um, Leanna's gone, the hamsters are dead, the plants are dead, the garden's dead, just about everything's dead in that house, or gone. How much longer are you going to last in that big-ass house by yourself? Seriously. Now, I'm not even joking anymore. This isn't, you know, DSP comedy now. Kevin over there is not chuckling anymore. Neither is Gary. I'm, I'm coming to you as one human being to another. <clears throat> is your life really worth this self-image that you have? And this frame of thought that you have? And I think to you it is. This is how you justify your existence. The problem is, and this is a very, and I, I want to come to you as honestly as possible. And to anybody who is a DSP fan, that man's going to die in that house if he doesn't get out. Give the house up. And as someone had said on one of my videos in the comment section, get out of that house and go back home. I don't know what happened. Now, like I said, I don't have all the story on what happened back in Connecticut, but I'm sure they're not like you and those people moved on with their lives. Go back home. Because if not, you're going to die there in Seattle. And I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm not saying that to be a dick. I'm not saying that to be an asshole. I'm saying that you're going to die in that house by yourself. You're going to. And then the sad, and here's the even more messed up part. And I want you guys to think about this. Because of how sporadically he is, how sporadic he is when it comes to uh, coming and leaving his house, and especially at the times that he does, it would be a little while before anybody realizes that anything's happened to him. Which is another thing. You're getting older. You're not in. You're you're certainly not in the best shape, if any shape at all. If you take a bad fall on your stairs, you're done. You're done. And I'm not saying that because I wish that upon you. No one does. But I'm saying that because that's what you need to hear. And I'm sure if you actually reached out to John or Howard or any of them, they tell you the same thing. Everything that you that you hold your hat on stupid ass cowboy hat that you think is worth something to you isn't it really isn't this is from one human being to another I'm not even going to call you a pig <laughs> but seriously though your life is worth something to somebody you know what I mean at 35 right he's, th he's 35 right Gary yeah okay great alright cool Kevin's off today um at 35, your life is worth something to somebody. I would assume your parents. And I assume they're crawling up there in age. Go back home. Get a job working with your pop. Start over. <coughs> but we'll save that for another video. 
we'll, we'll delve deeper into that. Let's keep going with John. But before I do that, you got to take some responsibility, man. You really have to. Okay? There's, I'll use my, my little channel, shitty ass channel, for example. There's a lot of things wrong with that. Sure. It is. It's just lazily run. It's so lazy. But people seem to be okay with it. Because I'm okay with it. Because I'm not... I, I didn't mean for this to be anything. So for a place to, for me to, you know, state my opinion. But one day, I'll actually do mold it into something. Maybe. <laughs> but then again, my livelihood's not on that. Yours is. It's never your fault... You never find a reason to change, and it's and and no matter what, the world's against you, and you just can't realize why. When, as Doom had yet again pointed out, as well as others, the two people who gave a shit about you most, probably next to your parents, you cast them aside like dogs, like they were nothing. As soon as as soon as they broke a leg, oh, I'm not even gonna shoot you. I'm just gonna pack up and go. There's no, there, there. it doesn't make you less of a man to admit that you did wrong or that you're continuing to do wrong. People wouldn't come down on you so hard if you did. The thing is, though, is you, you look at the truth as weakness. But like I said, we'll get into that in another video. DSP News. So I am completely in the dark in this situation. What ended up happening was I did continue to once in a while contact John on stuff. Uh, and sometimes he would respond and sometimes he wouldn't. And I actually remember the last major time that I actually had any kind of interaction with John Rambo was in early 2015, he launched the DVD, the Blu-ray release of Schnoz Man a Hole Punch. And when he did release it, I retweeted him. I let everyone know, gee, you should maybe buy some of this. I bought a DVD myself. And he even signed, you know, I guess every DVD he sold, he signed it. And he actually, for, on your thanks for all the good times that we had together, you know, John. So that was the signature he put on the DVD. Does that sound like anything negative? No, that sounds great. Like, he's like, you know, suck, it sucks that we don't do stuff together anymore because you moved, but thanks for the good times we had. That's literally like what he wrote on the DVD. And then after that, I have no clue. I've not heard from John since then. He doesn't ever write me. He doesn't call me. He doesn't text me. Nothing. And I did try actively to contact him and talk to him over the course of the year and basically i heard nothing whatsoever from john rambo at all since then so i have no idea what happened if he something <coughs> happened in particular that turned him off or got him angry at me the bottom line is it's never been brought up and i'm going to say this and i hope that people don't take this the wrong way but in life if you have something to, that you want to say or you have an issue with someone all right say it bring it up hash it out don't let resentment build up behind the scenes for whatever amount of time or whatever. Because this that's what happens. Is then, if something happens and you don't bring it up and you let resentment build up, that's when relationships get ruined, right? And the bottom line is, did I ever hear, get, hear or, or even get wind of anything negative from John or Howard or anyone from that camp who I used to do stuff with in Connecticut until I moved? No, not once. And in fact, we even had the big, remember, we had the big going away party in June of last year. And they all came. They were all there. We had fun. We had a blast together. We were drinking. We were playing games, eating, having a lot of fun. And it was like nothing's wrong. And then all of a sudden, once I moved, it was like, that's it. Well, Phil's gone. So now he's out of our lives. He aban It almost feels like to me like they're saying, well, he abandoned us. And we used to do all this fun stuff together. He's not here anymore. So now we're mad at him or something. I don't know. But it is, again. No, I don't. The delusion that, you, that you're listening to is... is astounding I have to say they went to your going away party they should as good friends they should they should they should but this whole thing about oh yeah the moment you got on that moving truck and you headed off <coughs> oh thank god he, he's out of our hair you know oh god we're free now Phil's gone he said something similar to that when he moved out of his parents house and he moved into his condo like, he looked at it as his parents just couldn't wait to get rid of him. Like, oh, God, Phil's gone. They can run around naked now. And the problem is, Phil, is in my own opinion, in my own opinion, professional slash unprofessional opinion, that's how you feel about them. They were, yet again, they were tools 
that you tossed off to the side and you only want them back when you're ready for them, when you need them, to be honest with you. But yet again, you're playing this narrative where it's not my fault. And now we're starting to get into more of the victim aspect of it. Like, oh, I thought we were such good buddies and we've been there for each other for so long. And as soon as I move, oh yeah, they, they couldn't wait for me to get out of their lives. Who thinks like this about people? Like, really? Who thinks that way about people who they call their friends? Are they really your friends then, Phil? Like, what you're telling me, what you're telling us, I should say, not just here at DSP News, a GTG network, but also our listeners and anybody else who will eventually come across this or on an on NDP's uh, channel itself, is that they... They never liked you. They couldn't wait to be rid of you. And when they were rid of you, they wanted you to stay gone. Let's talk. Now, let's flip that coin for a minute. I think what it was is as soon as you left, you were like, I don't need you guys anymore. I'm in a much better place. I'm the lucky one. I'm the one that succeeded at this. And you guys will only be there when I need you to be there. That's what I think really came, it came down to. I think that's what really happened. And you spun this narrative as soon as you got in front of this camera. Because I got to admit, to an extent, you're pretty quick when you're when you're when you're spinning the narrative. I'd want to say that you're 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 following a script, but you're not. I, I'd like to say that you are, but you're not. You're not. You're you're spinning most of this on the fly. And because of that, that's when the that's why when you make yourself sound like a victim, it sounds so insincere. It sounds very insincere. And you're always the victim. You can never just come out and admit that, hey, I did something wrong. Or, you know, that I did this, uh, I did the whole Project 7 nonsense behind, under, behind their back and under their nose. And then all this and that in the third. It's just, it's their fault. It's on, their, or it's on their end. Has nothing to do with me. No one contacted me. Like, like you're the center of their lives. That's not the case. It's never been the case. It'll never be the case. Just my unprofessional opinion, though. Just my unprofessional opinion. This penis. It's speculation. Anything that I could possibly say about a John Rambo situation is pure and utter speculation. Because I've been completely in the dark over the whole situation since it began. If it even began. So, that's why people want to start all this, this fucking shit, right? All this drama and controversial shit. They must have had a disagreement about money. <coughs> they must have, that film must have revealed something really personal or something, nothing ever happened. At least from my side, Zippo. I was never, again, never contacted, never told, never ever got an inkling that there was something wrong. So if there was anything that ever went wrong between my relationship with John or Howard or anyone back in Connecticut, it's on their side. They let it build up. They let the resentment build up on their side without ever speaking up. And I hate to say it, but in real life, if you're mature, if you are a man, you will speak up about an issue. You will not let it linger and resent and build and fester into some kind of a negative thing where you don't want to talk to someone again. And then you're going to even, at some points, talk shit about them and stuff. See, I would never do that. <laughs> no stop. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. <sighs> Gary, grab the Jack Daniels, please. All right, here I go. You're the last. You're the last person to be talking about another man's another man's manhood. You're the last person to do that. You should be the last person to do that. You really should. As for the resentment, no one resents you. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of people that resent you, but John doesn't. I don't think Howard do. I think when, after that whole fiasco that you're the victim of, of course, let's try to stick to your narrative. The victim that you are. That's what you are. You're the damsel in distress. You're Anita. And everybody's out. And the whole world's out to get you. You. You're the victim. After all that whole. After that whole situation blew. You know. Blew up. And all that happened. You weren't the one that was flagging down videos. You weren't the one that was. You know. You know. Sneak dissing them. On. Ask the King. And on your little pre-streams and on Hate Live, you know, you are the king, of course. 
And I suppose a king can be a victim also. But it's amazing how, as high as you've risen, you have the nerve to, to look down at the peasants and be like, it's your fault that they did this and that's what's causing all these problems for me. Like you're just somehow so high and mighty and you're just so, and you just, you fall into, your virtues are just so high above everyone else's. To, to even give you an inkling that, you know, if these guys were actually men and they would actually come to me and talk, there wouldn't be a problem. If they meant so much to you, why don't you go to them? You said that none of them have contacted you, none of them reached out to you. Why don't you contact them? It's funny, it sounds like every time you wanted to reach out to them over some YouTube-related stuff, they weren't feeling it, or they were just really busy. But then you you did admit yourself that you would text John during Christmas and he texted you back. So there you go. As for resentment, I don't see all these videos on John and Rambo, or on John and Howard and all these guys. I don't see them having, yet again, a channel like this one devoted to towards picking your shit apart. I don't see any of that. I don't see them, you know, going off on you on Twitter. So, where is, so, I mean, you know, did they just, did they just pull their dresses down and run off? Or did that never really happen and you're the one who instigated all of it? And now you're just trying to spin the narrative. It makes me wonder... It's funny because people used to say, it's really, really funny. People used to say about Leanna that she was stupid. And that's the reason why you got her. And that's the reason why you were able to hold on to, on to her as long as you did. That's also one of the reasons why you get you didn't do Let's Plays with her after a while. She, It was just, you felt that she was a hindrance to you. I really wonder, Phil, if that's how you felt about them too. That you just looked at that all those times and all those laughs and all of those great memories that you had with John and all those guys, you really looked at them as you know you guys are idiots. I'm I'm so above you guys that it's ridiculous, and I'll always have the high hand on all of you. I I really feel that I really feel like you never gave a shit about John and Howard from the hop. They never meant anything to you. They were merely stepping stones for you. I really believe that. I wholeheartedly believe it. Neither one of those men had value to you. I don't think anybody you've ever met had any type of value to you. I really believe that. And to be perfectly honest with you, I want someone to tell me otherwise. I want someone to say that. I want somebody to tell me, you can do it in the comment section, that yeah, John, it's, it's all John and Howard's fault that they started. And, and, lay, and lay out the scenario why. Lay out the scenario why. And if you can prove it, I'll make a video. I'll make a video completely dedicated to you and to your response. And I will admit that I'm wrong. I've got no problem with doing that if you can prove it. But if you can't, and you are a Phil supporter, then I expect you to just shit on the video and then just probably just walk away quietly. Just like Phil did. Hence the reason why Phil never was a man and didn't try to reach out to them, and didn't try to hash things out with them, and built up, and built up all that resentment against them, that he couldn't prosper off them, that he couldn't make any money off them, that they weren't the good little tools to be there when he needed them, to use them to his, his whim, and then to be cast aside. Ain't that right, Phil? TSP News reason to talk shit about people who I've always had a great relationship with. So for me, I have no clue if there's any negativity, any resentment. I have no idea, and I'm still in the dark to this day. So that's why when people ask me straight up, what's what's up with John Rambo? I say, ask John Rambo, because I have no clue. I'm literally in the dark. I was never, nothing was ever brought up, and unless, unless <laughs> John kept mailing me letters, and they went to a dead address, but he didn't realize it, so I didn't know he had a problem with me. No, obviously, I'm just being silly. No, it just never happened, so I have no idea. I mean, I'm literally in the dark. That's the bottom line. That's the whole situation. There is no situation. I don't know. And it's a shame. It's a shame because it was that was a long-standing relationship that I had. You know, the mid-2000s, I met John, and whether it was Street Fighter or us just doing other stuff on YouTube, I always had a blast with him. So I don't know what his problem is, and I have no control over it. He doesn't talk to me anymore. He won't really respond. If I text him or call him, I don't get anything back. 
So from my situation, from my perspective, it's a, it's, a, it's a, not even a relationship anymore. It's over, and it's 100% on him because I had nothing to do with it. All right. So in closing, uh, sorry about that. Had a couple of shots, so uh, bear with me on this. <sighs> it's... <coughs> oh, my last one hit me a little harder than I thought it would. It's all their fault. I had nothing to do with it. I'm the victim. Feel sorry for me. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't expecting this uh, <laughs> this report to run as long as it did. But this right here is one of those rare moments where you you even if you don't know the whole scenario, you know enough to know that this is disgusting. And it's disgusting on multiple levels. Now, here at DSP News, a GTG network. I'm supposed to be professional, but I'm not professional. At least not all the time. And this was one of those times that I wasn't. And I'm sorry for that. But at the same time, this is why people want him off the internet so bad. This is why people cannot stand what he represents and what he produces. What he represents is <laughs> excuse me, funny enough, first world first world problems. And the world owes me something. On the day of Phil's birth, the world owed him something. And he intends to spend the rest of his life getting it. What he produces is toxicity on a level that can't be said. Everything this man touches turns to shit. Whether it's people, whether it's friendships, whether it's relationships, everything he touches turns to shit. And the few people who get out, the few, the few people who cut him loose, he bashes. For everybody else, you're, you're the mud, and he's the pig, and that's what he wallops in. And if any of you ever try to think about being more than that, you're his enemy. It is what it is. I await your comments in the comment section below, positive or negative. And uh, thank you yet again for giving me some of your time. I very much appreciate it. This is DSP News. Always late. Never breaking, unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network, signing off. Folks, the goal for this month on Patreon, I have not updated it yet, but I already talked about it yesterday. I'll very briefly talk about it again today. It's going to be Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. It's going to be a marathon of me playing that game for about six to seven hours. Um, either on console, if it releases on console by late November, if it doesn't release on console by late November, then I will be playing it on PC, only I won't be able to capture, so what I'll do is just live stream it, and then I will, uh, basically split the stream up into highlights to upload to YouTube. Um, so if you want to see me play a big session of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, um, you know, coming up, then please pledge to my Patreon for this month. All right. I'll have more information on it as we get, you know, further into the month and I update the goal and everything probably for my when I get back from my time off is when I'll really start pushing it.